Hello and welcome to the D3 Podcast. This is your host, Matt, joined as always by John, Kevin, Sam. What's up, boys? Nothing well, much. Yeah. Got the Same. new cut. Looking fresh. <laughs> looking hey. fresh. Looking oh, fresh. Yeah, you know how we did I got baby Yoda on me. Uh, <laughs> repping, repping that child. Or uh, what's... What? Oh, please don't say uh, that. Uh, I, 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 can't, I, I, can't, I can't say it. I can't say it because that's a spoiler. <laughs> I can't say it. <laughs> All right. So, um, John, there's a song in my head uh, that has to do with the first segment. Um, uh, what, what, what do you think the song that's in my head is right now? <laughs> uh, singing money, 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 money. That's close. Money. Uh, that's actually a very good one because, yes, uh, it's also... <laughs> Super freak, super freak, super freak. Yeah. Because we're talking about Giannis, baby. <laughs> what a contract. What a contract. Giannis decided to sign the super max. Mm-hmm. I think some of us were overall expecting this to happen. Um, I, I think Giannis has specifically said multiple times, you know, like Milwaukee is, is his city. Um, I think there was just that little speculative thing where in an interview he just didn't say anything about it. And you know the media. We all just blew up and were like, oh, he didn't <laughs> say it. Uh-oh. But, you know, it ended up uh, working out really well for Milwaukee. And I'm sure that they're going to build at least like five statues of Giannis just to celebrate his signing the Supermax. Um, why don't we go over the winners and losers of this situation? Sam, we'll start with you. Um, as being a former resident of Milwaukee, I think the easiest winner is just the city of Milwaukee. Right? <laughs> and yeah. being such a small market team, uh, not really having any base. The last best player was either Michael Rudd or Ray Allen. And right, who remembers Ray Allen as a buck at this point? <laughs> I, um, I honestly didn't even realize that. Holy shit. And coincidentally, guess who's wearing his number? Giannis himself is wearing Ray <laughs> Allen's number. So, like, it was almost destiny at this point. So, uh, even not living there, I'm glad this city still has a face to it. I mean, I think we all know Giannis. Giannis is, he's an icon. He's a face to the city. And I think he's just a really humble guy, a very family oriented guy. So I think he's just glad that he's able to really shape the city. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think the the biggest, unanimously, the biggest winner has to be Milwaukee, especially for, and I feel like to me personally, I think the overall winner, we could even broaden that and say small market teams. This is a huge win for small market teams. Um, Kevin, what is your uh, what? What do you think about winners and losers? Uh, I think just like Sam said, like that's a just a huge win for Milwaukee in general. Um, I think the <laughs> the biggest loser here is the Milwaukee front office because they're mm-hmm. not going to have any to pay anyone else ever again. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> no, I I think they're gonna they're gonna have to start kind of playing a little bit of money ball now that they're a small market team with a big super max contract and really trying to get people for as cheap as they can. Uh, and especially with the, with the Chris Middleton contract with the drew holiday contract they have right now, like money's looking a little, a little tight and most of their team is on one year contracts or one year contracts and options. So it's, I'm interested to see what happens next year, especially when things are way more up in the air for that entire roster other than like Middleton and Giannis. Absolutely. Uh, I think from what I gathered with uh, Kevin's statement is that we're going to need to have Jonah Hill on the phone real quickly. Uh, (laughs) John, John, what do you got for winners and losers? I think, um, I think that one of the, uh, one of the biggest winners of this actually is Drew Holiday because (laughs) um, Drew Holiday is going to be, I think, an unrestricted free agent the year after this one, I believe. Uh, They're going to need to lock him up. They're either going to need to throw a massive bag at him to keep him there, um, or maybe he'll have to, like, get his money elsewhere. But I think that he'll be able to also increase his value during the time that he plays with Giannis, who's going to be locked in on a max contract. I think Drew Holiday, big winner in this one, going to go real good for him. And I think that um the you know the other thing that'll be interesting is if drew leaves which might actually be like the best thing that could happen to milwaukee so they could pull a guy who actually is like worthy of that salary slot but um 
<laughs> but yeah, I don't know. I think that it all in all, there's just no way you can paint this as anything other than a massive win for Milwaukee. I think it's kind of a big loss for a place like Miami, uh, mm. Dallas, uh, pretty much anyone that was hoping to do something cool in free agency this summer, because guess what? Yeah. There's nothing cool to do. Yeah. <laughs> They're all signed. It's it's gonna be a shitty class. <laughs> I think in in my honest opinion, I would have to say the biggest loser is Giannis. And the only reason for that being is because he won't be able to bask in the glow of Luka Doncic. Um he won't be able to play with him. And you know, that's I feel like that's kind of a, lo- a loss for all of us at this point. Yeah, yeah I'm sad yeah. about it. I think that. I think that it sounds like Giannis just wanted to be on a team where he was the guy, and yeah. and I can respect that. And uh, <laughs> hopefully, he can put some other guys around him that uh, that make it easier for them to actually, I don't know, succeed in the playoffs. Giannis has some work to do himself. He's got some growing to do in his game, uh, but. Yeah, it's it's cool. It's nice to see a small market team retain their superstar. It's something that you feel like it's just the odds are so stacked against you. So mm-hmm. yeah, I, definitely. I, I was like kind of happy for it, even though a little disappointed from like the getting to watch some crazy cool basketball stuff happen with him and Luca. Definitely, one hundred percent. On to other news, boys. I think one of the most surprising things in this, at least for the preseason, has been watching these two players looking absolutely above average than I think what most of us expected. And that would be John Wall. I think he's definitely above average, like a lot more than I ever could have expected, honestly. And then Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant, we have been talking about this all like offseason, uh, even leading up to the preseason. If he can even be 75% of what he was, he'll still be dominant. Dude, I think he's even more than that. Like, I don't see a single step back in his play um you know what I, i'm i'm absolutely shook i cannot wait to see this team play um i guess for you guys what was the most surprising of both of these players because for one john wall hasn't played for like you know over a year of basketball and then KD suffered a very difficult injury so sam um what is your view on on uh, how KD and John Wall are looking right now? I mean, for like two players that suffered like Achilles injuries, uh, John Wall trying to recover back, you know, two year span. Uh, it's good to see. Um, I think we just all forgot how John Wall played. I mean, we forgot how freaking fast this guy is. Like this guy. I mean, I don't know if you guys saw him drive to the paint. That guy's not afraid of contact, which is really good. <laughs> Makes me very terrified each time he goes in. But yeah, uh, it's 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 fun basketball, right? Especially with the the new pickups, right? They have cousins uh, who actually look really good in preseason. Um, you know, John's boy, Christian Wood, you know, he's still balling out, putting up the real stats there. Um, I think he has real longevity in the future there as well. And I, I do see a future with John Wall being here in Houston for for a while, you know? I think the way his, his game kind of just translates to each player, uh, he's a good mix between a guy that can score but doesn't have to. So yeah. uh, I'm really excited for that. But, and I think we're all excited just for a KD Kyrie to actually play for once together. You know, we've been waiting a year for this. We saw the stage in Boston. All right. No <laughs> curses out there. So it's good. No one got injured and they both balled out. So I'm really excited. All right. All right. I think we all have to say that uh, Sage isn't for cursing cities. It's for bringing <laughs> for apparently like shooing away ghosts or anything like that. I don't really know the whole thing for it. Um, but anyway, yeah, but it's uh, a pretty sick burn to do it to the Boston Stadium after leaving. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. That is an absolutely sick burn. Uh, I'm gonna go in the corner and cry really quickly. Uh, anyway, Kevin, there was also there were like a couple other players that weren't look, look, that weren't looking too bad uh, either, and that would be our boy Boogie. Our boy yeah. Boogie's not looking too bad. He, he definitely compared to I think our expectations, mm-hmm. he's not looking bad. Mm. Granted, that being said, at least for me, my expectations were really minimal. So (laughs) it wasn't that hard to exceed them. But he definitely, he looks healthy. He looks like he's doing okay. He looks strong. uh, And that's all you can want in a big guy like him. Um, So, I mean, it's it's good to see. It really is. I think having him in the league is just a fun addition. And I think without him, that's just another sad loss for injuries that none of us want. Um, yeah. 
Also related, I got to give it to him. Uh, Christian Wood looking, looking nice. Looking hey, pretty John. nice. John, you want to you wanna have your little uh, five seconds of fame for Christian Wood? <laughs> he is looking pretty good, isn't he, Kevin? He's looking <laughs> pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, it's 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 crazy that something where like the small sample we got at at the end of the season in Detroit um, looks like it might even be selling short what he's capable of, which is uh, it, it's awesome. It's great for the Rockets. Um, he's a confident three point shooter. Uh, he can move really well with the basketball, and he could like blow the socks off of like most bigs who will be covering him. Um, he's super switchable. Like he can pick and pop really smoothly. He like, it sucks that James Harden's going to be gone because they would be a deadly combination. They would be so good together. Um, and it, I'm just so excited to see it because I think he's going to be, um, uh, He's, he's going to have a really big breakout year. He might not be able to be – everyone's uh, – all his teammates keep, like, saying that he looks like Anthony Davis, and I get that from, like, the perspective of, like, the things that he does seem like Anthony mm-hmm. Davis, I think is what they're saying, because he is not Anthony Davis. Um, <laughs> but, like, he does a lot of those same things. He's he's a switchable defender who can shoot really smoothly, and he can move with the ball, um, play in the post. Like, it, Christian Wood is going to be – really really good if what we saw in Detroit and in that preseason game are going to translate to the actual uh regular season all right Uh, yeah absolutely Christian Wood it looks fantastic John is going to be glowing for as long as he can keep that up (laughs) um why don't we I'm really glad that you mentioned Harden because there is I mean that's like all we've been talking about. That's all the media has been talking about for weeks and weeks and weeks is about James Harden. Uh, that's all of uh, John's heart attacks have been related to James Harden. Uh, <laughs> so why don't we go into that for a little bit? I think the biggest thing that we need to look at is not only the Nets, but also James Harden in general. So Sam, in your honest opinion, do you think the Nets need to make a shot for Harden like right now, or are they fine without him? Um, it's a double-edged sword, right? It's like, how do you, can you pass up on a, an MVP caliber player? Uh, probably the most difficult person to guard in general. Uh, the guy, the way this guy draws fouls is unreal. Uh, we see him, he gets 20, gets 20 free throws that line. You kind of want that guy. Yeah. Point. But, um, as much as we all love super teams, um, I know we all bash the KD thing, but let's be honest, we all love a super team idea. Come on now. Yeah. Not the KD thing, but we liked, hey, 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 hey. We had Luca and Giannis talk earlier, okay? Let's yeah. slow it down here. Let's slow it down. <laughs> but um, I, if I'm the next, I, I would say let's not do it. I think there's 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 something I want to see with this roster. I think, you know, Spencer Dinwiddie, Karis LeVert, they're not going to have as much of a breakout again. Mm-hmm. Obviously, when you have two superstar and all-star talent combined together, hugging up the ball, it doesn't help when you add like, another James Harden as well to that. And I, I would be just very questioned about the chemistry issues with James Harden. Um, I mean, we've heard it. Kevin Durant said, I've never talked with James Harden about this yet. So um, yeah. I'm, I'm not surprised because I think James Harden's game to the point where he wants to be on team unhappy, but the boy likes to party in Vegas at that point. So, you know, I don't think KD is up for that. And Kyrie's for sure not for that. All right. No. He doesn't want a single soul, but I mean, you know, we saw him at media, right? He does his job at the end of the day. So mm. uh, I would wait if I'm the Nets. Really quickly, Kevin and John. We'll start with Kevin. Uh, would you agree? Do you agree, with Sam? W- are you fine with the uh, without a Harden on the team, or would you want Harden? I I agree with Sam 100. I think they have a really strong bench, like Sam said, and and Levert and Dinwiddie and people like that. <laughs> even though they won't get as much star time, uh, but I think they have a strong team overall. And I don't think you need a superstar, another superstar, in Harden to make that team complete. John. Yeah, uh, I think it would be cool, but I don't think it, I don't know how, I don't know how effective it would be. I, if they don't do it, I think they'll be fine. And if they do it, I'm going to be really excited to see what it looks like. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. 100%. So I think the biggest thing, you know, whether the Nets do this or not, we're looking at the Rockets without Harden right now. Um, 
I mean, you know what? At least he went to training camp, or not training camp, but at least he suited up for the Rockets. At least he's like mm-hmm. actually willing to play games and whatnot, which is fantastic. Uh, Kevin, in your professional opinion, uh, how are the Rockets looking without James Harden? I mean, not the worst team, but uh, you go from a top top three seed or whatever uh, to maybe six, seven, eight seed without Harden real quick. Uh, eight seed. I think, I think uh, like having John Wall is a big addition and it's a big star talent, but without and without Harden on your team, as your center is John Wall, who's coming off a basically not playing for the past two years almost. Uh, that's kind of tough to build a team around. And like Christian Wood's great, PJ Tucker's great, but they're not stars to have a consistent enough team to make it uh, deep in the playoffs. You know, like I, so I think if you, if you get rid of James Harden, you gotta get you gotta get someone else back fast. I think. Hey, John, you want to know what's in common with uh, with John Wall and, uh, you know, the Wizards? You want to know what's in common with that? I love that. That's pr- um, uh, <laughs> the eighth seed of the playoffs. Uh, <laughs> I don't I, you know what? I really see that translating. I think that's just his curse from now on. You know, it's not just injury. It's also the fact that he has to uh, settle for the eighth seed in the Eastern Conference from now on, which is just rough to Great. say the least. So mm-hmm. speaking of uh, playoff. How are you liking Philly uh, for a possible James Harden trade, John? I mean, that's the one that makes the most sense for the Rockets to do because mm-hmm. that's the one where they get an actual all NBA caliber player. I, I know that, you know, and someone else can talk about these, but there's rumors of like um, the Celtics and the Raptors also coming up too, which are uh, more interesting than what Miami can offer, I think. Um, you know, but if we're doing just a not a three team trade, then Philly's the best option, and James Harden on the Sixers would be really good um, because it's already a team that's kind of built a lot like a James Harden Rockets team, but with just Joel Embiid. Like they they already reloaded with shooters. Um, you know, they have uh, um, good defenders on that team, and they have Joel Embiid. Like <laughs> so, I, yeah. I think that that would be really cool for Philly. I don't think that they're in any rush to do it. I don't think that Philly's going to make a move unless like the Rockets capitulate to a point where like they're only we're we're basically like it's just too good to pass up on the James Harden deal. I think that Philly realizes they have a little bit of leverage here and they can wait it out because they might as well just see what their team looks like at the beginning of the season and if it doesn't look good, they can break the glass in case of emergency and trade Ben Simmons like <laughs> so I, I don't think they're in a rush to do it, but um, I wouldn't be surprised if that's where he ends up. It'd be it'd be a good team. James Harden in the East would be uh, fun. Yeah, I absolutely agree. I think the problem with the break in case of emergency glass is that there's also like in very small parentheses that says uh, break if you want to riot in Philadelphia uh, because this is the second that Bill, that Ben Simmons leaves Philadelphia for a trade is the second that Philadelphia starts rioting. And Philadelphia <laughs> will riot over anything. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. That's what I was going to say. They have rioted for less. If they so. traded Danny Green tonight, they'd be fucking <laughs> shit <shitting down. laughs> <laughs> it like, No, it's a, they'll be, you know, they'll be pissed about it and then James Harden will take them deep into the playoffs with Joel Embiid and they'll be like, okay, it was fine. <laughs> but like, Absolutely. It's nice to have someone who could actually create his own shot in the playoffs. Uh, turns out that's pretty cool. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. But, you know, that's definitely something that you really need for the playoffs. Um, last thing on James Harden, you know, John mentioned that three, that three deal uh, with the three different teams. Um, Sam, what do you think is the most likely thing to happen? What teams do you think are going to be involved? Um. It's funny because I feel like no teams learned from the Kawhi Leonard short sell that the Spurs did. Like, we got nothing from that. Uh, we got a first-round pick that ended up being the 30th pick, um, which is absolutely useless at that point, let's be real. Yeah. Um, and then afterwards, everyone's like, Anthony Davis, okay, let's sell everything for this, even though he could have <laughs> had another year to come over. Uh, you're basically doing the same thing with James Harden at this point. Um, if I'm the Houston Rockets, I think – 
at some point halfway through the season, you just got to get what you can at this point. If someone has an offer and it has a potential all-star on it, just take it at that point because you can salvage something. Don't be like me. Don't be like my Spurs. Don't, I don't want DeMar DeRozan. If, hey, anyone out there, if you want DeMar DeRozan, we can talk. Okay, let's talk after this. Uh, we can make a deal. But um, you're going to have to do a short sell. And I think in terms of a three-team, that's probably the only way where you're not going to have to do a salvaging deal. And, you know, you probably have to trade with, like, a Sacramento Kings where they'll try to dump, like, a Harrison Barnes at that point. Um, maybe Buddy Hill gets involved somewhere. Who knows, you know? Um, yes. But... That's the, that's the only way I feel like a trade will really happen is getting that third team involved. Absolutely. So why don't we just do something really quickly before we move on to uh, some other really interesting news. Um, GM for the Spurs, Sam, who do you think the Houston Rockets need to have on their t- team if a trade was going to happen for James Harden to break the John Wall curse of the eighth seed? Well, as GM of the Spurs, I would make sure they get, like, DeMar DeRozan. DeRozan. Jeremy Lin. Hey, you know, hey, I'm trying to get Jeremy Lin a contract here. You know, I'm Rob Palinka, former agent at this point. But uh, as a Spurs GM, I have to make sure that this team falls apart immediately. (laughs) I think that is to make sure John Wall plays 40 minutes a game. That's the only way I can see it. But realistically, uh, to make sure that John Wall progresses in his life better than any of those progressive soup commercials, let's be real at this point. The only way to do so is to, I think you need, for me, I think you need to keep Robert Covington. I'm not sure why they kind of sold him to Portland. They got nothing out mm-hmm. of that deal. Robert Covington was ultimate on defense. And, I mean, what else do you need? You need a corner of three expertise at this point. Robert Covington was the piece. You just need shooters on this team again because once James Harden is gone, there's no shooters. We have my pancake loving boy, PJ Tucker, grinding all day for a contract. Hopefully he gets his money, but... Get some shooters on this team. Eric Gordon's washed. Uh, John Wall, iffy. But I think if you can make John Wall a facilitator, that's how you make this team really good again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. Uh, Kevin, going off of that, do you think Ben Simmons is the uh, – just really quickly, do you think Ben Simmons is the answer? Or is there another player that could uh, potentially make this team better for the Rockets? Uh, I don't think Ben Simmons is the answer. Uh especially to uh, Sam's point, they need a shooter. Ben Simmons ain't going to shoot three. Ben Simmons ain't going to shoot three. Also, Maury's – Daryl Morey is smart enough, and he knows James Harden's worth, and he – I don't think he's ever going to take a deal for James Harden because the Rockets are going to want so much for him, and Maury's just going to be like, no – if anyone's going to swindle someone here, it's going to be me. <laughs> no one's going to swindle me. <laughs> I think Maury, Maury's keeping an eye out. There's no way he's letting Simmons go. And even if they did, Simmons going to the Rockets would be an embarrassment to that organization. Wow. <laughs> Holy shit. All right. Uh, John, would you, <laughs> what do you have to say about that? I don't know, man. An embarrassment? Maybe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He was, I, I think he was third team All NBA this year. I think he's he would be instantly the best defender on that team uh, who can guard guys. Easily more. <laughs> well, I mean, he can guard guys one through four, like lock them down, and he could probably guard a guard a setter if he needed to. Like he's he is a really really good player, but he does have very specific limitations that are <laughs> that are it, you you got to acknowledge. But it's um, I don't know I. I am interested in the idea of like the Jalen Brown package um, from the from the Celtics. Uh, if that was probably need to be part of like a three team deal because I think you just need more than Jalen Brown and picks. Mm-hmm. Um, Jalen's good, but he's not like that good. But he would be I feel great. like you would need like Marcus Smart in there maybe or something along those lines. Yeah, too. maybe or like something from some other team. Like at, you know, Denver gets tossed into every single three team trade idea. In the league. <laughs> they do because they just have an array of people who are uh, good to send out somewhere. And um, so, you know, or Pascal Siakam would be weird, but interesting because you already have Christian Wood. They're sort of like similar players, I feel like, though Pascal kind of like reads as more of a wing than Christian Wood does. I don't know. I don't like the thing is, is there's no way you're going to get the value that you need to like duplicate something like James Harden. So mm-hmm. at some point, like Ben Simmons is probably the best guy you're getting. Um, 
if you can get past Kostiakon, that's pretty cool too. But man, I don't know. Like it's it's a weird situation. I think that whatever the final trade is going to be is going to be like we're going to look at it and be like, oh, yeah, all right. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, that's totally fair. I mean, like you said, you you just you just cannot replace that style of play from James Harden. Um, we're going to get into some very fascinating news. So first off. Drew Holiday, Sam, I'm going to have you talk about this one. Drew Holiday is donating his salary to black-owned businesses. Uh, that's pretty fucking cool. I'm not going to lie. That's pretty amazing. Mm-hmm. No, I agree. And I mean, he also did donate the salary from last season as well. So I get on immediate props for that. Um, I'm just saying the standard of living in Milwaukee is very low. So he's <laughs> for sure able to donate a lot of money. <laughs> Kevin, yeah. we know the rent money there, yeah. okay? Compared <laughs> to Chicago, you know... Different story at this point, but no, major props. I mean, per Matt's turn, I know we talked we, we, outside of the podcast, but put some fucking respect on his name. Am I right? Mm-hmm. Exactly. You're this right. Guy, You're right. This guy, this good things on the court, off the court. Um, it just, it's just a great story to hear because I you don't really hear this from a lot of NBA players, you know, <laughs> especially when you talk about someone like James Harden, of course, you know, who drops right. you know, a hundred band on a rapper who's already rich. So it's like, <laughs> what are we doing here at this point, my friend? <laughs> yeah, 100%, honestly. Uh, hey, good on him, man. Good on him. Uh, as the resident Lakers fan uh, and traitor to the entire rest of the NBA world, uh, <laughs> Mr. Kyle Kuzma, he got a little bit of a deal, my man. How you feel about that? Uh, I, I like it. I think it's... I think it's actually fitting for him. Like it's not an over evaluation of him. He got an okay amount of money because he's playing. Okay. Like, I, I, think <laughs> <it's really fitting. laughs> I was worried they would either really underpay him and pay and do like a one year contract and be like, all right, we'll see how you're doing. Um, but they, they paid him a decent amount of money for, for how he's been playing. I think it's, it's perfect. Uh, for what he has three years and then a player option too. uh, but yeah, I think it's I think it's a really good contract for both both parties, both the Lakers and Kuzma, uh, and I think that just helps the relationship there as well. And I think Kuzma is just going to be happy. Yeah. Now, really quickly, so first off, he it was a forty million over three year deal, just for everybody else to know. Um, Kevin, really quickly, do you think Kyle Kuzma is ever going to be in the starting lineup again with the new roster that they have? Do you think he's worth that starting lineup spot, or do you think he's better on the bench for the Lakers? I think he would have to prove himself in that starting lineup, but I think he has that potential. I think we've thought he would come into his own a lot quicker, but it, and he's we've seen glimpses of greatness but it's just not there yet. So until I see something a little further, I think he is a good bench spot. Um, and he's a good kind of six man ish position. Um, and I think that's what they're going to want to keep him as until he, he makes that big step forward. Uh, but I, again, I think that he has the potential to do that very soon, especially with LeBron basically teaching him everything uh, right there. Yeah. Definitely understandable. Um, John, I know when you were talking about, you know, two top two possible like boxing matches in the NBA happening, uh, two very aggressive players. I, I'm going to have to one up you on this one because I think there are going to be two new uh, players that are going to be fighting it out for especially for defensive player of the year. Uh, what, what do you have to say to our boy Andre Drummond, Drummond for his recent uh, <laughs> allegations? Like what? <laughs> Does Andre Drummond like? Does he watch? Does he watch his own film? Like, <laughs> what is he thinking? He's like, it's like, there's no Andre Drummond is not a good defensive player. He could be, uh, theoretically. Yeah, it's been his whole career. Is is Andre Drummond could be good at something in theory, but he's only good at rebounding. Um, <laughs> that's it. And I will. I, I'll give him that. He's he's really good at rebounding, and he he really is. He's maybe the best in the league at it. But boy, like, there's not a lot else going on there. Like, he doesn't have. He's not switchable like at all, and he's not he's not like a very good rim protector like Rudy Gobert. Like he doesn't he doesn't give them much of anything on defense really, like other than defensive rebounding. So no, it's insane that he says that. Everyone likes to hype themselves up in the off season um, and say crazy shit. Andre Drummond is no exception. Um, but I did 
I did want to say like one uh, little like just to take it back to Kyle Kuzma because there was an interesting factoid I found online, and it's that do you know who the last player uh, the Lakers ex- offered a contract extension to uh, as a rookie? So like a rookie contract extension, someone they drafted and extended him after his rookie contract expired. I have no idea. It was Andrew Bynum. Like wow, Andrew years Bynum. ago, years wow. ago. Like, it's been a long, long time since they've extended a rookie um, that they drafted. So it's, like, kind of a it's, – it's kind of fascinating. And I, I think it's really hard to have a good, fair evaluation of Kyle Kuzma because the, the dis- discourse around him has gotten so ridiculous in both directions. Um, but I agree with Kevin anyway about what he was saying. But, yeah, isn't that weird? It's just, like, he was the first yeah. – like, first one since Andrew Bynum. That's crazy. Like <laughs> God, I haven't heard that name in so long, honestly. Yeah. Like, that's, that's, holy shit, that's wild. Another um, Andre Drummond like player. <laughs> 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 no, he was better than Andre Drummond, but it was, yeah. Hey, Sam, you looked, uh, you looked pretty distraught when we were talking about Andre Drummond. Uh, do you just want to throw in a little quick tidbit about him? About your praises to Andre Drummond, I'm assuming. Oh man, <laughs> the only thing I will praise is that he made a smart deal opting in with the Cavs at this point. The man got his bag. <laughs> the man is set for life in Cleveland. That's all I'm. <laughs> yeah. um, am I the only one that would rather have Kevin Love play 20 games than a full season of Andre Drummond? Because that's what I'm getting <laughs> at all this. Would I rather have broken leg Paul George? Probably still. I mean, at this point. The, the problem is the person Andre Drummond learned from learned from was Greg Monroe. Does anyone oh, yeah. remember Greg Monroe? Exactly my point. Greg Monroe last seen on a bench and before that actually playing with the Milwaukee Bucks. Um, and the only thing he was good at was rebounding. <laughs> That's how we learned from Lazy. Greg Monroe Mark. was like he was like Jalil Okafor before Jalil Okafor. Like, <laughs> 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 Woof. Oh my okay. god. All right. Uh let's let's just throw that away because I don't want to talk about Andre Drummond anymore. <laughs> uh Kevin, Mr. Uh Mr. Will Barton. Um he's got some words for Denver. Uh what do you have to say about Will Barton not wanting to come off the bench? Uh what is it? What is it that Sam always says? What is it? What's what's the phrase? Uh, Delusional. <laughs> I absolutely. Who does this man think he is? <laughs> Seriously, who does he think he is? Thinking you're... like, yo, Will Barton, I ain't coming off the bench. <laughs> what, dude? You're not that good. You're you're a good bench player, sure. He's okay. He's he's a slightly above average, but like to say before the season starts, like, yo, I am not coming off the bench. <laughs> What? That, I, don't, I don't get it. He's not. He's not a star by any means. Again, slightly above average player, maybe okay. But to be that cocky about yourself, like, bro, you gotta. You're making what, like, three and a half mil a year? Chill, man, chill. <laughs> <laughs> of all the fucking players to just like have the audacity. To just be like, oh, um, you know what? I'm really not feeling like coming off the bench. I uh, definitely deserve that starting spot. Uh, why don't we really just really quickly take a look at this roster for a second? Um, who's going to be in the starting lineup for Denver? So you got Jokic. Uh, you got, let's see, Michael Porter Jr., I'm assuming, is probably going to be starting with all the hype that he's been getting. Uh, you've got... Jamal Murray. Oh, Millsap? Jamal Murray. Wow, man. Now put some respect Jamal on my Murray. guy's name. Oh, no. I was not going to leave him out. I'm just like, I'm looking <laughs> through the other ones right now. You know, Jamal Murray is 100% oh, no. starting. Yeah. Is Paul Millsap starting? Sadly. <laughs> yeah, that is very sad. Oh, yeah. I, either either way, Will Barton is not going to be like, no, I'm sorry, man. You're going to have to take a step back. You have no uh, bargaining chips on this one. Um, Kevin, uh, Will Barton to the Bucks? Interesting, maybe? Uh, if he can humble himself and get ready to play on the bench, <laughs> then, yeah, I'm in. Pay him, pay him two mil <laughs> to let him play on the bench. God, the disres- the Will <laughs> Barton disrespect. <laughs> he's like, he's like an old, he's like kind of like an old Bogdan Bogdanovich. Like he's like he's <laughs> okay. Like, hey, hey, slow down there. <laughs> like, Bogdan's like what, like average like 15 points in his best year. Like I don't know. Will Barton is. Will Barton's a good scorer, and 
I don't know. <laughs> that Denver team is like more of a question mark than I think we give it credit for, but we'll talk about that later. <laughs> yes, we will. Yeah, I'm, I'm almost sure that we will. Um, really quick, uh, hey John, um, we're gonna we're gonna talk about Kawhi in just a second and the Clippers, but I really want to get your reaction from this, especially since it's your turn. Uh, Mr. Gordon, Gordon Hayward got injured. How's that looking for your fantasy team <laughs> before all of your trades? <laughs> Gordon Hayward. Uh, Gordon Hayward, his skin of his skin is made of paper, his bones <laughs> made of glass. Uh, that man, I just <laughs> fucking just like drink some fucking milk, Gordon. Like, <laughs> like, dude, you take some calcium supplements. I like, do you, are, are you already at like fucking 60 year old osteoporosis bones in your body? Like, what is going on, man? You, good on him for cashing in, knowing that his body is like a time bomb. Like, good, good on Gordon. I, I hope that he can just like get. It's just a finger. It's on a shooting hand, but maybe he'll, uh, he'll come back fine. But then it'll be in an ankle. Then it'll be <laughs> a hamstring. Like, then his back's gonna get fucked. I. I'm just so I'm so stressed about Gordon Hayward. I I have a lot of hope that he can deliver for me this year, um, fantasy wise, because no one's gonna fucking take that guy. I can guarantee that. I, you're not gonna take. You're not gonna take him. You're not gonna take him. So <laughs> need Gordon to just fucking get it together, man. Fucking see a doctor. Get some like do do something. <laughs> Gordon, like, <laughs> I feel like Miss. I feel like Gordon. His uh, his new nickname just has to be Mister Glass at this point. Like, <laughs> you're just you're just chilling in the movie right now. You're in a wheelchair the entire time. Like, I'm sorry, man, but <laughs> this is just who you are now. <laughs> Exhausted by Gordon. <laughs> uh, we are just sick of this shit at this point. Um, Sam, as the resident, well, I mean, I guess you are. I mean, you're a Clippers hater. Kevin's a Clippers hater. Whatever. Um, <laughs> delusional. It's fine. Uh, Mr. Kawhi and the Clippers are a little bit under uh, investigation. Uh, how do you feel about that? Uh, I'm feeling great, to be honest. Yeah, Kevin, I'm you feeling sure. great? I'm sure. I'm feeling great. I'm feeling great about <laughs> the investigation. Uh, in case anyone doesn't Rude. know, the investigation pertains to some random guy associated with the uncle of Kawhi. Basically saying that he informed so many different types of people that, yo, in order in order to get Kawhi, you got to sign Paul George, all right? Make that happen somehow. That's what he, they kept saying. He then goes on to say that uh, the things you have to pitch to Kawhi are that it will be a great life for you as a Clipper here, even after basketball. Uh, basically saying that you can change the roster to however you want to. la di la la stay competitive. And the big emphasis is be a real challenge to the Los Angeles Lakers and LeBron James. He goes on to continue saying that he told Clippers officials basically at this point that Kawhi's uncle was promised a house in Southern California, travel expenses, uh, and that Clippers owner Steve Ballmer would fund a Hundred million dollar marketing campaign for Kawhi Leonard, <laughs> which is which is not. Yeah, this is all like, ah. how do you make this into a case at this point? Like when everything's just so verbal. I feel like this is a guy who just you just met on the street real quick, and then just bumps into you, falls over, and pretends to have an injury, and then makes an entire lawsuit against you just because he ran into. You. <laughs> um, it, this is nuts. It's maddening. And the funny thing is, the NBA is just investigating that. It's, Ill, it's currently prohibited to have indirect communication between middlemen. There's nothing about like how it, what they're asking for. It was just that this guy came in and asked for this stuff. So it's really funny. Um, the Clippers could be punished with a $10 million fine. They could lose their first round picks, which they already lost in that Paul George Jesus. trade. <laughs> yeah. I just have to give a quick reminder on what this Paul, Dre, Paul George trade was. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> SGA, Danilo Gallinari, fourth. Four first round unprotected picks, <sighs> unprotected picks, one first round protected and two first round pick swaps with OKC. That is maddening for a Paul George who has the side of the rim consistently every time at this point. 
<laughs> yep, that's right. I brought Paul George back into this. That's right. <laughs> oh my God. I was gonna I was waiting for it. I was waiting for it. I knew the minute that there was Clippers conversation on the dock that it was gonna be brought up. That is my bad for actually letting that happen. <laughs> but hold up, it gets better because Ty Lu comes out and says, oh I want to coach Kawhi Leonard just like Michael Jordan. Yeah. <laughs> And you know how you do that? Oh, I play no. the triangle. <laughs> yeah. The last time that work was in 2002 with the Los Angeles Lakers. And that's because you had the most dominant big man in NBA history. All right. You cannot. Do- okay. And be honest, Michael Jordan didn't really run the triangle that effectively. It was more of, oh, man, I got triple team now. Let me pass it out. Give it back to me ASAP. Right. <laughs> yeah. the corner three. I'll drive it. Do a backflip at it at this point. But, um, look, the, the triangle worked. It worked for. Seven years. The last time, like I said, the last time I worked was 2002. Phil Jackson tried to do it back with the New York Knicks with Carmelo Anthony, and that completely failed because that's just not how basketball works. You cannot hold the ball for that long unless your name is James fucking Harden, okay? It doesn't <laughs> anymore. So, Ty Lu, I don't know what was the logic between hiring Ty Lu, but you're just getting a Doc Rivers offense and then immediately throwing it out because that actually worked. And you're putting Ty Lu, who's running a non-existent offense at this point it's it's ridiculous this is clippers is a joke now at this point <laughs> anybody else want to get in their uh, paul george slander before we move on to the last segment <laughs> oh, don't don't get me started i could i could have a whole episode on paul george yeah style. yeah we're not we're not talking about this we're not talking about this we're done we're done with this um so guys i know that clearly drummond is not worth uh, 205 million over five years. Uh, however, John, do you think that Rudy Gobert is? <laughs> wow. Uh, no. Um, <laughs> no. No. He's not. But I, I've, I've heard some arguments about why Utah had to do this. That it's very difficult for small market teams to attract that kind of star level talent uh, to build competitive cores and things like that. I get it, and but like two hundred and five million dollars for five years for a guy who is an elite, like all-time great defender level kind of guy, fine. But like who offers almost nothing offensively outside of like catching lobs and like operating within like five feet of the basket. Like, yeah, can't create his own shot. Like, defensive player of the year, like all the time, but but it doesn't really it, worth anything. He's he's not like he's not like a top level like facilitator out of the post. Like he's not like. Mm-hmm. There's just like no other skill that he has at like a high level. He's very efficient offensively, but that's because he doesn't do anything. Like <laughs> so it's 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 a very weird it's it's like it's a lot of money and he's qualified for it because of the defensive player of the year awards. But it's like, okay, you guys are locked into Rudy and Donovan. I saw that they're gonna be paying them like four hundred million dollars over the course uh, combined, like of these contracts. You'll be in the playoffs every year. I would be shocked if they ever get to like the Western conference finals. <laughs> but you know, sometimes when you're in a small market, you just got to do that, I guess. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, it makes sense. You want to try. Not if you're the Spurs. Like, <laughs> no, 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 no. Not if you're the Spurs. <laughs> so first off we had Paul George slander and now John throws in a little Spurs slander. So uh, I think that's a good time to end the show, but really quickly, I do want to get your take Kevin and Sam on the, uh, just really quickly, how do you how, do you think Rudy Gobert is worth this, uh, Kevin? Uh, I, I kind of agree with what John said. I think it's overpaid for sure. I don't think he's worth that money. He just, mm-hmm. as a defensive beast, he's great. He's talented, but he's not. He's one dimensional as all hell. Like that's that's what he does. He gets a, gets you two blocks a game, maybe. Uh, gets you some rebounds. Gets you. F- five to ten points uh i don't know i think i think that the smarter move would have been to trade him honestly and get a lot of stuff for him whether that's multiple other people or multiple picks stuff like that but i think they're just scared of losing what they have uh utah being utah and they've been the exact same for so long i feel like of just the this uh, Rudy and Mitchell combo, and they don't want to lose that, so they're gonna shell out all the money they have to keep those two people, and they don't give a fuck about the rest of their team. Yeah, one hundred percent. Before we end the show, Sam, 
uh, do you want to give the jazz owners just, I don't know, like a special word, something that you really like to say, um, just so that we can end the show on the, on a really, really happy note. Do you want, is there anything you want to tell the jazz owners? Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I got a quick two parter real quick. I, I'll start with All the right, bad thing because fine. we gotta, we gotta give some love to the shade. Okay. Rudy Gobert is the reason we had the corona. I'm just kidding. Okay. There's no reason. He's not the reason for the coronavirus. But, you know, our boy Gooby, not a smart man in terms of uh, following the rules. And another thing I find that's going to be a problem with this Utah Jazz team is following the rules because let's make it very clear. This is not Rudy Gobert's team. We will never hear this name again when you hear Donovan Mitchell, Donovan Mitchell, Donovan Mitchell dropping 40 points a night and you have Rudy Gobert dropping 10 and 12 every night. <laughs> What's that going to do for $205 million? Get you a sixth seed that can probably get knocked out 4-0 once again, probably to the Denver Nuggets at this point. It is an utter embarrassment by this organization to sign a man like this. I wouldn't even trade for Miles Miles Turner and a couple first round picks. I would have done that easily in a heartbeat. Easily. <laughs> Say it with me. Easily at this point. Rudy Gobert, go back to France, okay? We don't want you. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right. You're, you're, you're a one time all star. Like, who do you think you are? <laughs> like, what are you? Like, who are you? Tony Parker deserves more money at this point. Better Frenchman easily at this point. It's ridiculous. Guys, but, this would not this, this would not be a podcast without Sam mentioning Tony <laughs> Parker of the Spurs. <laughs> <laughs> but I will give props because uh, after the owner, the previous owner, uh, husband had died, she was like, I'm not gonna manage any of this shit. I don't have any of my kids are gonna I'm not gonna pass it on to my kids or anything. So he was like, Hey, let's sell it to the guy who is the founder of Qualcomm. I don't know if you guys know Qualcomm, but very huge Kevin, you know, engineering school, that's all I talk about for the software nerds. We don't affiliate ourselves with them, all right? We don't affiliate with that. But super cool guy. I heard he's really chill. And the big thing was, was the new owner going to keep the Jazz, you know, in Utah at this point? You know, I mean, John, do you really love Utah? Like, I, I, I don't think we vibe with Utah, you know, Salt Lake City. Utah. Yeah. <laughs> Utah, I mean, let's be real. But, You're not a fan of Mormons? Is that what I'm hearing? Hey, well, well, Salt, Salt Lake City is creepy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But uh, I'm glad there's an owner that actually wants to keep their team in their town. Uh, Seattle, you fucked up. I mean, like, I don't know how much more I can say that, but you messed up big time. But uh, I, I'm excited that this guy's really open-minded. Maybe this Gobert thing pays off, but as of right now, biggest mistake in this entire franchise history. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the heat with Sam. Uh, you'll be hearing more fire from him. Uh, I know this is very different because typically Kevin's the one to say outrageous things, but here we are. Um, <laughs> thank you all so much for listening to the podcast. This has been the Deep Three Pod. You can find us on Instagram, on Twitter, same exact name as the Deep Three Pod, uh, as well as Gmail if you want to email us any questions. Uh, if you want to call one of us out, please feel free. We know that there's some 12 year olds that just really, really hate our Paul George slander. So if you must, uh, stay in school. Yes. Case. Yeah. Yeah. Stay in school. Yeah, stay in school. It's, it's fine. It's fine. Thank you guys so much for listening to the show. You can also find us on YouTube. See all of our beautiful faces. Uh, thank you guys so much and uh, have a great rest of your night. Peace out. Rudy Gobert can't guard me. Mm.